This is a Pyramid One International Network presentation. Hi, and welcome to Pyramid One World Radio. Let me tell you about the hosts of the upcoming show, A View of Humanity. Jamie Clark was just voted and given an award for the best psychic in Phoenix, Arizona, three years in a row. Evidential psychic medium, Jamie Clark offers powerful and accurate validations of the spiritual dimensions around us. As a spiritual teacher, Jamie shows how to integrate the natural psychic senses with the empowerment of spiritual knowledge to help create a more fulfilling life of love, happiness, and success. Jamie's avid curiosity to understand how his gifts work have led him to participating in scientific studies about the afterlife and mediumship. As a master educator in spiritual development, Jamie shares his wisdom through his podcast, Psychic Evolution, the podcast where you discover the psychic potential within and learn how to empower yourself and manifest your psychic and mediumship abilities. Jamie Clark is also an author of the children's book series, The Adventure of Rocco and Two Key, The Kids from Mars, book one and two, as well as the psychic evolution training cards and the Jamie isms, philosophies and isms of a psychic medium Now, let's talk about Maggie Clark. Maggie Clark is the co-host of the Psychic Evolution Podcast and a prolific spiritual coach and accomplished healer. Maggie is committed to helping people find a way to blend their spiritual life with their every life, everyday life for empowerment, healing, and growth. The author of 365 Days of Tarot, inspirational tarot for your daily life. Maggie is a gifted tarot reader and astrologer. Maggie also has a healing arts practice in energy healing modalities. Together, these two time or team up to show you that your psychic senses are so natural so natural they are supernatural okay now put your hands together let's bring them on yo 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 hey baby shared this before you know clapping yeah and then I would hear, what's the sound of one hand clapping? And I thought it was silence. And as I've shared, Chi, my master guy, was like, well, Jamie, put your hand up like this, bend your fingers, and then do, I'm like, that's freaking yeah. brilliant. That's the yeah. sound of one hand clapping. We did that, we did that last, last week. Yeah. I, I showed it to a couple of people. You know that they actually didn't know. They had no idea. Yeah, most people don't. I didn't realize until he pointed out, like, oh, that that makes sense. I was just used to the old way to go. When you clap your hands, it's got to be the other hand. They didn't say it couldn't. Exactly. They didn't say it couldn't be something else. But you know, though, a lot of things that have to do. Now, we're we're talking about energy, love, things that have to do with our our brains and that that we can emit to the rest of the world. You know, we're like uh, AT&T built into our brain. Yeah. Like, hi, how you doing? <clears throat> oh, where? Where? What? India? What? Yeah, huh? Kind of like the cell yeah, phone and the cell phone. Exactly. We've had it all our lives. Ever since that we went <gasps> first time. But on the other hand, we also have we also have those people who don't use it. 
don't use their brains. What's all right? I ran into somebody. Mm, I guess it was like Saturday, Saturday afternoon. That uh, you know, somebody was sitting there and that, and they were, they were going like this, and they're going, you know, they got their fingers going. <laughs> so I turned around to them. And I says, "Why don't you just cl- you know click a finger and get it over with?" <laughs> and I th- I thought I was being funny. You know what I mean? It was like, hey, I was just kidding. You know. <laughs> they turned around. And they said, "I can't do that." I said, "What? What?" I said, what do you mean you can't do it? You can do it with this finger. You can do it with this finger. This one. This one. This one. I mean, uh, you know, you can go through them all. Nope, can't do it. Tried. And they were like, this is now, we're not talking, you know, anybody that would be considered below average learned brain. You know, <laughs> we're talking somebody who had a brain and it really did work. And it's, you know, things don't, you know, people, there are parts of your brain you don't use because you just, don't feel like it. And you get used to that pattern and may not change it. Exactly. And it stays that way. And that tucked away spot. I mean, it took me 10 minutes, about 10 minutes, maybe, maybe a little more to teach that person how to click the finger. They'll probably, they're probably doing it right now. We just can't hear it from here. Right. <laughs> they're probably still sitting home going, God oh, damn, look at this. Oh, how did my- that feel oh. sharing your knowledge, which everyone might be aware of the potential but the way you were able to share it within 10 minutes, you got them to empower themselves and start snapping their fingers. I feel just like you do when you turn around to somebody and say, this is what I'm going to tell you about you. And, and it's, it, but go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah. And that connection, once they get that experience, now it's real. That's why I'm like, the beautiful aspect is, is most people on average know how to snap their fingers. Some Mm -hmm. have their own dynamics in whatever way they're perceiving it. But you were able to bridge that to give them updated way to go, hey, it doesn't matter what finger it is. It's just this kind of a sound and this way of doing it. And possibly you simplified it enough within 10 minutes that something their whole life they haven't been doing, they all of a sudden change their thought process and we're creating a whole new level of awareness. In this case, literally, you got them to snap we're in a good way. Get, <laughs> we're gonna get, I'm going to get anyway, uh, some, some expert you know, with things like that. Because, I mean, I met somebody who also can't ride a bicycle. But if you put a skateboard on, on the floor, they'll kill you with it. <laughs> like That's why did not pick it up and hit <laughs> no, i'm serious well something like that but no no but i'm serious i mean they, they can do that but they can't ride a bike notice the hand-eye coordination one thing they connect with that they can ramp it up beautifully the other one's like how are you supposed to be doing this yeah and then the old adage is just like riding a bike and people are like i don't know how to freaking ride one so imagine how they might feel like well well then what else am i supposed to do to get back on Mm. Oh, now it's, it's, another, let me give you another one. People who are going out right now looking for jobs. There's a billion zillion jobs all over the place, you know, and some of them are actually, you know, they raise their, their amount and everything else that you can make a decent, decent uh, living on it. They, they turn around and say, well, I can't do that. And that's something that's, uh, I mean, seriously, I mean, I must have hairs on my back because I can feel them go up in the air. <laughs> you know, it's like rawr, when somebody says, "There's nothing you could do." Look, let's face it. I mean, if I'm four foot eleven, and somebody says, "Go over there and uh, you know carry over that four by eight plywood," you know, over to the truck, I would turn around and say, "No, I can't do it." However, that's not the only job out there, and the jobs that are out there, you can't say you can't do it. You can't be a telemarketer. You can't be uh, you know somebody in it who serves at McDonald's, for instance. Or something, you know, and right. slam yourself a hamburger or or like a pizza. I see it at every day. Mm. <laughs> make, make pizzas and throwing them up in the air in the whole nine yards. But, you know, these these kind of things that are all over, but nobody wants to do them. It's not like people are taking their jobs. It's do them. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that's yeah. been very interesting to me. And that is pretty much anywhere we go, they're all saying big the hiring. And yet there's nobody working there. Nobody I'm, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> fascinated. It's interesting because things are in some ways getting back to normal while in other ways trying to hold that pattern. So it's interesting to see what's going to kind of come forward to at least hopefully start getting out of this old pattern and into a new one. 
which is in this case, you know, if you need to pay the bills, you might want to get a job if that's how you need to make the money or whatever way. So people are going to be pushed in a direction to go, okay, so, you know, whatever those plans were that were benefiting, of course, in an appropriate way are now changing, meaning I don't believe that they can now stay there. And if they're renting that the owners can, they cannot kick them out because of circumstances. But now things are shifting where they're getting semi back to normal, but still the old pattern of there, which is not working. So it's a very interesting dynamic that people are ready to come out of the cocoon, so to speak, but not necessarily to get in back into the workforce as much as it could be. You know it's not a negative, it's just kind of there. You know, it's even more funny than that. You see people turn around and they go, well, you know, uh, they don't pay enough. And I say, well, what do you mean they don't pay enough? They're, they're often like $14 an hour. What do you mean they're not paying enough? It's just, that's money, it's money in your pocket. Well, they, they want us to do 50 hours. I said, well, 14 hours for 50 hours, <laughs> you know, and I give him a number and he turns around, he goes, yeah, but I don't want to work 50 hours. I said, wait a minute. I, I said, you're, you're, you're talking, you're either going to starve to death and live in your trunk of your car or 50 hours a week, at least 50 hours a week. I said, what is, what is coming? He said, well, he said, you know, I like to, I like to do this. I like to do that. And a lot of people don't like to go out, you know, the, the, you know, with their friends and the whole nine yards. And I said to him, I said, look, dude, this is what you got to do. You got to stop something somewhere or draw back on something somewhere and think about, like I've said before, and I said, this person happened to be in, in that conversation that we had, that group. I said, you have to love yourself. Respect. If you respect and love yourself, you will love and respect others. And they will love now, and respect you. Exactly. And when you get with this group that's working 50 hours, just like you are, I said, it's going to be unbelievable. And, you know, like companies like Amazon and everything, we've got, uh, they're flying in and out of, they, they've actually built uh, a longer runway. Wow. Here so they, could, they could land their big planes. we got a huge warehouse, not more than 10 minutes from me. Are they kicking it in or what, man? Oh, oh God. Cow. And like anybody that wants to go over there and work, they start you. If you have no brains at 15 hours, $15 an hour. Awesome. Take out the Very garbage. Cool. Take out the garbage. I mean, I heard this. I mean, right? I, was over, I was over by the airport, and it just so happened that one of the guys happened to be over in the uh, Amazon thing, Annette, and knew one of the pilots from one of the planes, and the guy told him what people were doing in the thing, and he said, guy was literally just taking the garbage in and out of the building and getting $15 an hour. There's a time and a place for everything. That's why it's like, right, what? What do you want to vibe with? And if you don't want something, what do you want? I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. And okay. a lot more people, though, they're starting to open up to their life experience to go, no, 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 okay, this is great, but I, I, I'm ready for changes, but I, I don't know what to do. I have no yep. idea. Yep. And I always say, one, congratulations, you've got an awareness. Two, if you don't know what you want to do, then how do you want to feel from this next direction? Happy, fulfilled, empowered, about what? Anything and start to give life to that connection. Otherwise, most of us will wait and go, okay, if I have this job, then I feel successful. And we'll wait for that physical manifestation of the job to happen to feel successful. When for me, I'll start feeling that way before it's anywhere in sight. Now I'm sending that vibe of creation and co-creation with the people, circumstances, and experiences that will come in more of my life with the life flow, not the life force to me. It's not semantics, it's the way we approach it and it approaches us, but being able to get more of what we're looking for and less of what we don't want, because I'm not ignorant, but I found the more I kept approaching the problem, the more I kept getting similar problems. She, my master guy was like, Jamie, understand the problem and create a solution. And then let it uh, change. I'm not ignorant, but I quit trying to. Yeah. You said it. He said yeah, he did. <laughs> create. Create. That is the word in yep. what you just said. Create. We can create anything we want if we put our mind to it. Yes. And can you accept that with reality? your guy? <laughs> That's the powerful aspect. And then again, you know, the reason why we get a little bit easier is, well, that it's a spirit form. It's not a physical form. We're tending to limit ourselves to the physical and putting all the effort to do something or walk or, you know, whatever the case is. 
when everything is truly effortless in the energy field. It only applies to us as how we perceive it. If you think something's hard, it's hard for you. Think it's easy, you know, that's why life is relative. But I'm seeing more people opening up to life and using their abilities more, that gut feeling, you know, and they're getting more accuracy to go, you know, it's interesting, but that gut feeling, I'm like, that psychic thing is tending to be accurate. I'm like, right, so see how it feels and then see the outcome because then you'll start to get a gauge, a reference. When it feels like that, it's usually playing out like that. When it feels like this, it's playing out like this. You'll get a law of averages, an equivalent. On average, when it feels that way, it plays out that way. You get a good reference to feel and read energy of life. Maggie, you're just about ready to jump on that mic. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, uh, I, I'm serious, man. She's like, She's I'm, I'm, re I'm reading her. Yeah, yeah. And you, can see, you can see the heat, the heat, the heat. <laughs> you know that I mean? brain's going good, like it's like, Rrr. but I, <laughs> but I think it's a, it's a, it's a woman. I got this thing, you know, with women for some reason that I could be in a room full of them, and that, and I could get the one that's pissed off, like you have <laughs> no idea. There it is. I'm like, I'm like, you're the one. Get over here. <laughs> Look at how sensitive you are. <laughs> We got to we got to talk. I'm serious. It's funny, but it's true. But look at what's happening now. You're saying it before it happens. Now we're creating a perpetuated pattern. Now it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Because notice we'll tend to tune into that. And you're saying it playfully, but seriously, to go, man, I could be in a whole bunch of room with a bunch of people, and pip, we'll connect with that one particular one who sees things differently on average than the others. And so, what keeps happening? You keep tuning in and finding that person. To both of you. Have you ever turned around? I mean, I've done it and I do it. But I mean, when somebody's turned around and they got this really, really bad look on their face, you know, <laughs> like a minute, they, they are going to pick up that, that, that skateboard and smack somebody oh, with shoot. one of those kind of things. I mean, I turned around to one the other day, right? And I will, right? We were, we were pretty close face to face. I said, Are you afraid it's going to break if you smile? <laughs> and she was like, She was like, What do you mean by that? I said, I said, well, I said, you know, seriously, I said, is there something, can I help you with something? I said, is there something like, you know, a, a flat tire or, or something, you know, you didn't take out the garbage or something like that. So she started, then she started laughing. And when she started laughing after I was going through my, my, you know, my thing there, she turns around to me and then she goes, you know, you just took a weight off my mind. And I don't know what the mail, I didn't ask. I didn't go any further. I didn't want to know, you know, something like that. But whatever it was, it was holding her down. It was like somebody had a, a foot on her nose. You Until? Know? You're not going to, now she's, the rest of the time I saw her, which was about 15, 20 minutes all together, she was like talking to people and, and more of a smile. Before that, she was introverted and totally i mean the, the face just looked like like a like a i don't know a dead person no no expression or anything else sure just you, know what I mean? you want to see when a face you want to see life that's the kind of thing that you like to see right now uh, i know that times are bad people have bad times and everything else but the best way to get rid of those bad times is to talk about it you do it all the time jamie you talk to people it's you too maggie you talk to people you get into people you get to see the inside of the person. Yeah. And that's the only way you're going to help anybody. It's in a beautiful way. Yes. Yes. You begin to understand more effectively where they're coming from. Speaking of getting into somebody, we have somebody on a phone. Cool. You know? Let's do it. Let's let's see let's see who it is. First name is Nassar. Oh, um, yeah. Beautiful name. I, I got you, Nassar. Okay. Here's Jamie. Hey Nassar, how you doing? Okay. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing well. Well, let's see if we can get you even better. So what's up? Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about career. Mm -hmm. Do you see anything? Changing. Because <laughs> I'm like, you know, I hope you're working, but as soon as you're saying that, I'm like, ooh. And it's a good thing, not a bad thing. And I'm sure you're successful no matter what you were doing, but I also feel like it's a whole new vibe. Um, there is a potential, one, that I feel like you have a couple of opportunities that will be offered. Just because anything's offered doesn't mean you have to choose it. But what I also pick up with at least one of these is that there might be some training or some, it's not like schooling, you've got to go for years. I don't get that. But 
but I do get information from the outside in, which is usually, you know, without being too general, there'll be some training, different ways of doing it so that you'll be able to kind of fit right in. Now, whatever this opportunity is, because, it, you know, you're not silly, you're selective, but I also feel like whatever this is tends to vibe with you enough to where you appreciate what you're doing and how people are interacting with you. And I know it. I know it sounds kind of odd, but have you even been looking for another opportunity? Because you know you're asking, but it doesn't always mean that that's the case. I feel yeah. like you're going in a new direction. Yeah. And do you do you see um, do you see a change of location from where I am right now? Very very strong potential. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And it's kind of interesting, but things are going to be going around the same time where you might have other opportunities, and then there's the potential for shifting locations in some way too. Doesn't mean you have to, but it's really, really strong for you. To me, there's like an 80% chance that strong potential you'll end up moving someplace. It's a lot more than 50-50, <laughs> will or it won't. Eh. Now, pretty much I feel like in this case, sometimes you'll be pushed in a direction, so it's not always easy, but I feel like, okay, here we go. And so there'll be kind of a, a reconnection with life in a way. Now, here's another thing. I also pick up as a potential with another opportunity that might be offered is you either know the person, you've worked with them before in some way, or they know you through somebody, but there's a familiarity with at least one of the people that will be connected to at least one of these opportunities. Doesn't feel like both but I want to do the best I can to be as specific to go. Don't be surprised if, you know, they're like, hey, and you'll know them. You know, I've got this great product or service, and if you're interested, you'd be like, oh, wow, that just kind of happened, just came to me. Like, yeah, but you're the one who's opening up for other ideas and opportunities. You'll start to bring things in, but it's a reference. Just because they come in doesn't mean you have to choose them, but if you don't and you do whatever it is that you do, it's because you choose to, not because you have to, because these other opportunities have been there, basically. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Of course. Let's see what Mag has for you too. Um, I also I completely agree with Jamie. I got the same read on you the potential to move, but I also see that there in any new job that might be offered to you, there's a potential, usually there's a learning curve, but don't be surprised if it also um they want you to like really learn something before you can like jump into the job. And when you learn it, you figure out, oh, I've got, there's so much I could change about this to make things better. I feel like from your skill set and from your past, you're pulling forward new perspectives that people can actually learn from you how to be more efficient with whatever job that looks like. Um, and a quite a, a strong potential that you might have to teach in some capacity, whether it's teaching um, other people how to do something or leading a, a whole crew or a whole team. There's this whole thing of leadership and teaching that you might decide you want to step into as well. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so, much. so again. Yeah, you got it. And as these dynamics are happening, as the opportunities are opening up, realize, you know, trust yourself and what you feel. If you have a gauge, if you have a direction that you are feeling you want to go in, go in it, test the waters, check it out. Because I feel like you're open, you're not silly, but it's also going to be that because you're starting to expand out and starting to get more connected to life and potential outcomes, more of what you're wanting kind of thing, you're going to start to attract and connect with the right people, circumstances and experiences that will get you a lot closer to the way that you've been wanting things to go in a good way, not the bad way. Right. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You got it. And I'll say congratulations because more than likely you're going to have a couple of opportunities right around the same time be offered. And if anything, it's just, you know, a cosmic validation. Go, hey, you didn't even have to do anything. You're just doing you. But now you already have a choice to make either one of these or neither of them or maybe both. So it's unlimited, but it's really cool, kind of like Mag is sharing, when you can have some insight and information, then also, I feel like you're very practical. So you do vibe where, even though you may not say it a lot, I do feel like you are kind of a go-to person, 
Like, you know, what what would you do, Nassar? What, how would you handle? And I feel like you're genuine. Like, hey, you know what? Here's how I would do this, at least. Doesn't mean you have to train everyone, but down the road, don't be surprised if along with what Mag's saying is, is I feel like there could be a potential for you to maybe train other people in some capacity for a particular opportunity or job. It's a really good thing, not a negative. Doesn't mean you have to, but it's really strong for you. And then I'll say, if and when it happens, because more than likely it will, you get the credit. Just reading your energy is the point. Thank you. Thank You're you so welcome. much. All right. Good to that, talk you with you, kiddo. Around. You can hang around if you want to. You can just uh, stay on air and listen. Yes, have fun with it. Okay, I will. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you Thank up, you. Uh, if you got anything yeah. else, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see it. I got a face for radio. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. you know, but it's really cool because in in just reading energy, many different ways of reading energy. This is potential circumstances that are lining up and Maggie and I are reading the same circumstance in different modalities. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, and here's the thing, Nazar wasn't here shuffling the cards. Normally, if they're in front, you want them to shuffle it because you get their soul vibe and, you know, that kind of connection. But notice Nassar is wherever she is, and it's over the internet, and yet Mag, Maggie can shuffle those cards with the right vibration of reading because it's about that person that she's targeting, in this case, Nassar, and then able to give insight about circumstances that haven't even happened yet and to a person that Maggie cannot even see physically in any way. It's like a disembodied voice, isn't is wait, isn't that what mediumship is too? De right, just the technology to connect with it. It's just one's in a body, one's not. Both soul prints of consciousness. See, you don't say it like I do. One breathing, one not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I'm the one breathing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah. You I mean, you really into it. Yeah. That's 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 the the funny part of it, you know. Hey, can you guys do a reading on my partner? For Diane? Yeah, the reason why the reason why I ask you that is because I've got four or five people that I see every morning. Like you guys know, I mean, we do the thing and the breakfast thing and the whole thing. But they ask me all the time, can these people do something at a distance? Do you have to be, do I, he said, do I have to get on the radio to do something like that? I said, well, I said, they, I said, people come in from the phone. I said, their energy is on the line. I said, we're directly connected. The phones are connected into the, the Skype program. So therefore, you're getting a direct connection with the person. I mean, it's not going around the, in the, around the mountain. Plus, a direct connection to other people in their life experience. Right. I'll have people come to me and they'll ask me, you know, what about my boss or my spouse or, or whoever it is? And whoever they're labeling that particular <laughs> name i'll be able to pick up pick up that person's soul print that they're referring to and usually be pretty accurate with circumstances and experiences and dynamics and be like yeah that's exactly what's going on i'm like okay so here's what i'm doing just reading your energy field because unless you do techniques of keeping your energy clear you will wear other people's soul print energy in your energy field and all i have to do as a sensitive psychic medium and everyone is is go through that energy field and connect with the soul print vibration of who's being labeled whoever it is and usually be able to connect with that person and not only that i'm able to a lot of times give psychic validations of upcoming events that are involving other people and then when it happens, I also like to make sure to go, see, I said it before it happens. So you know what else I'm doing? I'm into that quantum physics thing. And out of all the life ingredient choices of potential, you've already pretty much put this together. And it usually makes me accurate. And then my thing is to go, okay, so if that happens, and I said it before it happens, I'm also connecting with the future you and other future other people. And then I respond to the fact to go, that future you is also what constitutes that deja vu. I haven't done it, but I've done it. I haven't done it, but I've done it. Yes, you have. It's now connecting <laughs> consciously to something who's been in the ethers of potential outcomes that out of all those outcomes, it's been strong enough that anyone who's sensitive can pick it up usually and give you that outcome out of the infinite potentials. And that's what makes it surprising. 
you know, like, wow, that's magic. I'm like, yeah, but let me show you. Here's what I'm doing. Here's how I'm doing it. I want to put the practicality and get out of the booga booga into, man, you know, as Mag and I always say, this is so natural. It's supernatural. Everyone has it. Can you be comfortable enough? Do you want to use it? And what level do you want to take it to? Because Mag is amazing. She has talents in a variety of other modalities. Very insightful. And she's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, we were also talking about dimensions. Dimensions mm -hmm. are like a book. You know what I mean? It's like pages. You can turn the pages, and as you turn the pages, that the page is the you know, dimension. So you just keep flipping them and flipping them and flipping them. You'll get there or get backwards or wherever you want to go. I mean, you can go either way. And yep. you know, people people turn around to me and they go, "Really?" And it's like I'm sitting there going, "Oh man, you know, would you come on?" I mean, well, I didn't go to go to no supernatural uh, school or anything else. I mean, I do a lot of reading, yeah, but I mean, you know, that's about that's about the size of it. I mean, I know that things are always possible, not probable. They may not be the same way, the same time at the with the same person. So the probability of it is uh, an infinite number. Mm -hmm. in a and the ways to make it happen are infinite. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's the one that the, you have to make work for you. Whatever that is. Yes. And finding those tools and techniques, you know, for me, anything I share, I put to the test. I need to know it's real for myself. Nobody has to listen, but I'll give you everything I do. Once I put it to the test and I've gotten an end result. OK, now there's something to this because I was saying, you know, what are these meditations and mantras manifesting in my life? Or why am I doing it? I want mm -hmm. something that I can refer to. Not just la, 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 man. Well, everything's spiritual and life's relative. So it's like, let's keep moving along. Well, you're definitely not a psychic actor on TV. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, for sure. However, however, you're the completely other side of that spectrum. So therefore, if you were on TV, you'd get more people watching you than them. That's awesome. And, you know, it's cool because I, I've done a number of shows, but I also feel like there are other opportunities coming up mm. in the near future that will be more than likely connected to entertainment that way. Entertainment is, is a weird thing. And uh, people told me a long time ago when I first started, and that was 1969 was my first one. First wow. Professional gig was 1969. And we went out and played. We were kept on for an extra three hours at the place that we were at. Wow. What started this whole thing was the guy who got us to book this for the job to go in said, Bob, you're tall, you're skinny as hell, just act natural. <laughs> That's what he said. So when I went out there, I made like the, there was a, a white, you know, rag in front of me. There was no audience. The audience wasn't there. I was having a good time. I was having a good time. Yeah. The heck with them. I don't care what you got. I'm going to have a good time myself. You know what I mean? So so I did that, and I did that all the way through, you know, my professional life. And nobody, I mean, I still get people that, that write me from Vermont when I played in Vermont or Bennington or uh, cool. up by the Air Force bases and that, some of the Air Force bases and that that we did. You know, every once in a while you see a drop come down, you still alive? You know, it's like good, nice emails, you know. Are you still alive? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still breathing. You but... should respond, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm serious. I mean, it's it's so crazy. But you know, people remember you for being you, not so much for being somebody else. They'll remember the show, but they won't remember you. And if you want to be remember, remembered as you, you have to just be you. And that's the thing. Notice you're having a great time. It, was, it wasn't about the other people. It's like, hey, man, this is just fun no matter what's happening. I'll do it for a freaking rag in front of me because that's, oh, that just leaves me with my own flavor. And that's how I'm standing out. Yeah. You know, it's what I always say is how you stand out is just do you and the passion. Whatever it is that you have passion for, that is what speaks to people. That is the blending of success in that particular circumstance. I'll give you, I'll give you an instance or two, actually. In, I guess it was 1975 or 76, somewhere around there, uh, the Rolling Stones did a giant stadium. 
And I also I also was there when when the Pope was there. So hey, <laughs> you know what about that? But uh, yeah, anyway, they did the 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 whole thing and everything else. And then their their ground crew, you know, cleaned up all this stuff and everything else. And I was working for a communication company, and all the lines that went out to wherever radios or whatever else was picking up things, that was our lines. So I was more or less babysitting our lines for where they were. So okay, I see this box laying on the ground. And that beat up box, right? Well, it was a it was a the first one of the first radio mics with the little uh, antenna on it and stuff. Right. So I brought it to a guy and he says, I don't know, I never saw that before. And I'm like, but it was laying over on the ground. So the guy says, Well, I don't care, throw it out. I did, <laughs> right in the back of my car. Yeah, there you go. That right. Mic, that mic, and I have it here. That I'll show it to you one of these days. I'll I'll yeah. bring it up. They're they're bigger than normal. It's got a bigger uh, antenna on it, but I used it all the time. There was one time that I was in Closter, New Jersey, which is right up by New York State on the on the corner, going toward the Hudson River, and there was snowing. I mean, we're talking a blizzard like you have no idea. Why those people ever came on a Saturday night to that club and had to see us, I have no idea. I'm in serious. You couldn't couldn't drive. You couldn't walk. Couldn't do anything. Well, be myself. I took the mic. I had a thing in my, my ear so I could hear what was going on in the place. I took the mic and I walked up the block and across the street in a snowstorm. I'm singing a song. I mean, in fact, I was singing And it my, still held the signal? My, you could, oh, yeah. Oh, I was good for a quarter mile. <laughs> so I'm going up the block and everything else. And then I come back and I got snow on my, my, on my shirt and everything. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, it was so funny. And the people went crazy i mean the owners of the barn had to come around sit down sit down sit down. people were standing on tables clapping and everything else because they were looking there was huge windows and all these people are pressing up against the windows i mean we're talking like uh windows that are like 10 foot tall and yeah, the whole side of the building look at the adventure you took them on they're just being able to sit there and now they're like oh this is freaking brilliant hey That's thank awesome. god but he opened up the door i would have frozen death yeah <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I went. I went out the emergency door. You know the one with the beep. When you, when you, when you, <laughs> You're so skinny; it doesn't even register. <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here. I just cut right through the snow. No problem. But okay, I did not miss the cold. I, I no, you didn't forget about it. I mean, I was. I was. They, the guy. Guy had a thing of bourbon. That when I got back, when I was, we were off. He said, "Drink this." He said, "You need it." <laughs> so you've always been a little off. What? <laughs> 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 you never roll me, baby. What? Anyway, anyway, <laughs> I got the shirt. It says I like my bourbon. Anyway, hey. uh, yeah, serious. It's good. It's cough yeah. medicine. Anyway, getting back. Maybe that's why I got my voice. I don't know. Anyhow, hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Really. Well, now you're now you're you talking about where I came from. Everybody talk like that. Hey, listen, you go down that place. Hey, listen, yeah, come on. Yeah, huh? Now, when you sang, did you still have some of that attitude in the words, or did you change like a lot of people uh, seem to do I would, when they sing? I, what we did, all right, most of the stuff that we did, other than our originals, if they were they were copy songs or something, it was we did them that if you took the needle and put it on the record, that's what we sounded like. Nice. I mean, I can I can change the way I sing and the way my voice sounds. I could sound like most of the lead singers that are out there. Excellent. So did you ever think about No, I could, I could, I haven't done it in years. Do you ever think about getting back into it in some way, just having fun? You know, my, my guitar player is still out in California and he mentioned to my bass player who's in Delaware to get in touch with me and see if we'd like, like to put the gang together you know, or anything, you know? And I said to him, I said, why not? What the hell? You know, yeah. I, still have, I still got all my equipment and everything. So cool. Strong enough that I'm asking you about it. Go, eh, there's we, a can, reason. we can do it though through the internet. Yeah. Huh? Exactly. Uh, I have a yes. full board here and the other guy out in California, he's got a full board. So between him and I get the quality, man, that's beautiful. Ever know. I mean, I do so much stuff in here that, that, that people say you did that at home. Yeah. Yeah. Look at what's happening. You're more than likely at a computer that is plugged into wires into the house or whatever gives you energy. And yet we're sitting here looking at each other, physically moving in realities, instantaneously making this connection. 
Mm -hmm. Kind of like how I receive information, where the tool, all you have to do is open up and tune in. And then what channel, what stations do you want to tune into? Kind of like, do you want the AM stations or the FM? Because there's a bunch of stations on those channels. It's just because you're not tuning in doesn't mean it's not mm -hmm. playing. It's always playing. And the ability to kind of tap into that, you know, for myself is you're playful, but you have a lot of good insight that you'll playfully share with people that it's not like, hey, you're telling me I'm stupid. It's, oh, I didn't think about it like that. Hey, that's interesting. Yeah. And when that can happen with a realization of entertainment, now it's not like you're pushing it on me. It's like, oh, that was good. And you know what? I kind of like that because your energy is vibing where if what you're going to share is going to get me more like that of a good attitude and just kind of easy going. All right. I'm liking it because you're living your truth. That's when it's just natural. You're not putting on airs. You're just being you kind of like with the audience, three extra hours just because yep. you were having fun because yep. that's a vibe. As you can see, that can be very powerful for people because maybe not everyone just has fun to have fun. Well, by the time we get home, I think I slept till three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, huh? Right. I, I was so, I was so dead. Maggie, those... you're up. Okay. I'm going to actually go back to what you were asking about prior to sauntering. <laughs> sauntering. Um, but yes, it's completely possible to do a reading for someone that that you've never met, that you haven't spoken to, or about someone through either your energy field. However, when I shuffle, I'm like, usually if you just say, hey, can you do a reading for, you know, Diane, who's really close to you? I'm going to say, okay, let me connect with her higher self. So it's that higher self energy that I, you know, connect with when I'm shuffling and I shuffle until it feels like it's done. And it's just like, okay, done. So I have laid down some cards if you want me to read for Diane. Or oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did know if you just wanted that or just kind of threw that out there as an idea want, of what's possible. I want, I want people to see what you guys do. Okay. Through the internet and what we can what we can achieve by having other people get in touch with you just like this and and getting into the, the, the show and then going further <clears throat> and getting a, a larger picture of what their what their things you know what, what's going on in your life all right cool well here i see that um her main focus right now is the queen of cups so she's also recently gone through some kind of expansion of consciousness of some kind where it's a little bit clearer a little bit more awake but that queen of cups tells me also she's been dealing with some empathic feelings and i feel this is what i feel because after the Ten of Cups comes the Devil, and then the Page of Coins, and then the Seven of Pentacles, just so people have an idea who know Tarot out there. But do, when I move out, do I move out now? No, 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 you shouldn't move out. You shouldn't move out. But just, just realize Proactive. that, <laughs> I, you know, she might be processing some empathic feelings that she had when she was either a child or through her conditioned like reactions, responses. So whether she is working on maybe reprogramming the subconscious or healing an ancestral wound or identifying where she gives her power away when she feels close to someone or feels other people's emotions, whether it's happy, sad, angry, whatever. And I think she's going through what I call the identification process. First of what's hers, what's someone else's, what does that look like? But she's been doing this for some time. This isn't like a new adventure for her because she is extremely empathic. I feel like she has already like been working this out, planting seeds. And what it feels like is it definitely feels like she's working through something from her past, whether it's through her lineage or through the way she was conditioned and what has transpired since that conditioning, which was a long time ago, she's learning how she's processed her emotions and her feelings. She's bringing more consciousness into that, more awareness. And what it's going to do is it's going to help open her up to new experiences in life. So whatever new experiences that she's thinking about starting, because I feel like she's she is thinking about either starting something new or going in a direction 
um, there, that's already kind of in motion, but it's brought up all this stuff to kind of think about, work through. But once she gets to that point where she feels comfortable with understanding how she feels around this whole thing and why she feels the way she feels, she'll be ready for those experiences. And they're naturally mm -hmm. going to just kind of unfold and open up. But with the devil here, you do have to identify where you give your power away. And, you know, when you're an empath, we could give our power away with something like, gosh, I'm, I'm tired of feeling other people's things or blah, 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 blah. Or I'm tired of processing this, 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 this. You know, or I'm tired of talking to this person. She's always in a bad mood and it gets me down. You know, it could come out in everyday life in those types of conversations. But what it does is it says, okay, but why? Why do I get annoyed? Why do I feel that way? And when she asks those questions, she will have a very good understanding of the why of it. And then she'll be able to be like, okay, I'm good with this then. I can still be empathic. I can still open my heart to someone. One. I could still be maybe in this like engaged relationship of some kind. And it doesn't have to be one specific person. It could be many people. It could be like something from her past that she's just processing. But it is like a healing energy that comes forth, but a healing through feeling, you know, definitely hmm. a healing through feeling so that she can move forward and have some new experiences that she's already kind of gearing up for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you realize that I'm per I'm processing that that whole thing. I mean, uh, you know, as a as a uh, uh, person who's on the internet and uh, you know is a, a media director in a sense. I mean, it's like it's there. She does her time on the on the. Uh, she's on got the a lot of ideas. I feel like she's starting to manifest more. Like, okay, like, here we yeah. go. So it's a really good energy for her. You know, I was like, okay, here we go. I get a little bit of uncertainty, which, yeah, okay, don't we all have it? But I also feel like she's willing to take a chance on things because it's now more of like her own energy. Not that she's leaving anyone behind, but that she's able to fit even more effectively into what she's wanting, to what feels good for her. Because sometimes you get a lot of ideas and you don't act on it. It'll drive you freaking nuts, which <laughs> a little bit I kind of feel like is there in a good way. So as she's opening up more, that's going to get even more creative ideas and more work opportunities. So, you know, again, I hope you guys are both retired. Whether you are or not doesn't matter. It's I feel like she's going in a direction even more productively that down that avenue, as well as some other friendships or circumstances. Well, there you go. And I hope everybody that, that, listen, that is listening to this is this is somebody that, that is part of the radio station. And at the same time, is now getting a reading that I can I can definitely positively say it's definitely a hundred percent on. I mean, the part that I recognize is definitely on. Cool. She would to she would have to hear this and process, you know, what, what it is net to to match it. But anybody that's out there that comes into this show that gets an interaction like this. Is very lucky because you're learning more about what you want, what you can give, what others can help you with. Yes. Just by finding out and understanding yourself. Mm -hmm. Huge. And the nice thing about readers is that everyone will approach it from a different angle. You know, I might approach it from a growth angle or a soul evolution or a healing angel angel angle. Same thing. <laughs> and then Jamie might approach it from the practicality of work and relationships and everyday life. So, you know, when you choose a reader, it's important just to feel like you're aligned energetically with with where they at and what they have to offer. Sometimes you don't know when you're choosing someone, but it's it's sometimes good to ask questions. I get asked questions sometimes like, well, are, can you give me like really good um, time frames and things like that? And, the, you know, and it's like, no, no, I'm not really good at that. Talk to Jamie, you know, <laughs> and so it's good to ask sometimes what the strengths of, of a reader is before even booking an appointment. Like, hey, what are your main strengths? And they'll tell you flat out, this is what I'm really good at and this is who I am. Actually, it's usually appears right on their website if they know themselves. And then you could go forward and choose a good one. And word of mouth is the best. Yeah. I'm very honored. Most of my opportunity to be of service is word of mouth. And when you can have that and you know the person who's sharing whatever it is, you know that they're genuine. So why would, you know, at least for myself, I would always check that person or that circumstance or dynamic out just because I know my friend has great 
connections, like they make the right choices. So I have a lot of faith in what they say. So it's that kind of a connection that somebody's already been there in a way that they've experienced the reading in whatever way it needed to be. So there you go. Yeah. Now, Jason is on here. And Jason, are you there? <laughs> it's Reese. Is that Reese? I was just going to say, although that name is interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, How you doing, Reese? You, you hey. still stole somebody's phone or something? <laughs> no, no, no. It's um, a long story. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I got I got four hours. Go ahead. <laughs> and how you doing? We well, are we do know Reese. She's a yeah. good friend, so we're not yeah. yet. I'm always yeah. straight up with that stuff. You know, like, hey, no, we've got a connection here. But you know what, Reese? I also feel like you've got an amplified energy. I feel like things are starting to pick up around you, and other people are starting to react in a good way. So don't be surprised, <clears throat> excuse me, when a few opportunities are opened to you. Doesn't mean you have to choose any of them, but there's this very good solidness to go, wow, you know what's interesting? I was just thinking about changes, wasn't sure exactly in what way for that, and all of a sudden these opportunities are coming to me. Like, yeah, exactly. That's because you're on that channel, you're tuning in, so things will start to play on that channel. It's a good thing, not a bad thing in this case. Okay, cool. Um, so good to know because my is I had discussed with you and they made an offer and I was supposed to actually leave on Sunday to go to this orientation in Florida and then they changed it and now I'm not leaving until around March 15th and there's some due diligence that they're conducting in the meantime. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, what's interesting is I feel like there's another opportunity that's coming for you in a very good way, in a very good. And again, this is there, but I also feel like it's the adjustment timing. Won't it be interesting that something else around that time is offered to you as well? So does it feel, does the Florida thing feel solid? Like it's. Yeah, it feels, it feels, feel no, it feels pretty solid. It feels like it's lining up a lot more solid than it was. Yes, ma'am. Now, are okay. you open to do that is the point. Right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So the good thing is, is you're getting to There's this point where, yeah, you might have to make a decision on that. And the good thing is, is I do feel like you will make the right decision. You've got a good mind, you've got a good awareness, and you're very intuitive. So just put all those together as you're putting this into place. Okay. This will be the next level for you. And here's the thing. Yeah, if you choose that, there's also kind of an acclimating either to get you to work with other people or maybe start training them or being a go-to person. Either way, it's a really good energy about you just being you. But hey, but that just being you is standing out on the radar screen because other people are appreciating more your directness not that you're having to pick everything apart but if there's challenges i feel like that you're able to give some slightly different perspectives so that people are like oh all right you know what that's good not like you're dissing everyone it's hey you know have we thought about that so it's a really good energy that they'll at least more than likely come to you with that opportunity you know, we're kind of bringing some other people in and you've got a really effective way of communicating and, you know, however they'll say it. And, you know, we would love to have you step in to maybe uh, assist in this way. And you'd be like, well, yeah, but you more than likely will do it. Okay, so. All right, I'm leaning for the Florida thing that I because I feel more I feel more solidness around that, but I mm -hmm. just want your insight. I'm feeling um, the same. Yeah, feels more solid for you. Okay. So does, it, does it look like I'm going to be traveling then to Florida? Well, hold, why don't you hold on a second and let, uh, let Maggie use the cards and give you oh, a yeah. little, little more insight on this, okay? Well, I, I actually pulled two cards, and I'm in a complete agreement with what Jamie said. This is a great opportunity, and the sun also says, yeah, you just have to be you. Your own light, your own energy, your own personality and essence is just, it's what's needed in that situation as well. It feels just like a direct match. And they, the authentic. 
Right, and they both align with uh, the vibration of one, which is new beginnings and starting something new and taking action. So it's all, I, I completely agree. Keep us posted. Let us know what goes on. I sure will. Thank you, guys. You got it. Great Thanks, to hear Reese. from you. I was hey, good to talk. Let me let me ask you a yeah. question. Let me ask you a quick question first. Where'd you learn that this show was on tonight, and what number to call? Oh, um, it was on Facebook, and I've known Maggie and Jamie for a long time. So mm -hmm. I've called them before when we were um, out of Florida, weren't you before? Yeah, 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 we're we're in Florida. We're yeah. in Florida now. Yeah, uh, we're in Lakeland, oh, Florida. Oh, you're in Florida. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's uh, right. let me see. It's so 72 outside that. right now. Oh, it's 85 here today. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be it'll be 85 <laughs> there tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. You guys are having a heat it's wave, man. And I'm asking if I'm going to be traveling to Florida. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm down, so they say. <laughs> Things are lining up. Isn't that interesting? Right. Very yeah. place you're talking about. He's located at. See that? Just come on over, and that we'll do. We'll do coffee. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Bill. Good enough. I'll talk to you guys soon. Later you got now. it. Definitely. Okay. All right, bye bye. And I love Reese's direction. She's just very straightforward, very matter of fact. And it's really nice because when you know you're talking with somebody in that capacity and you realize that they've already either thought or felt it through before they're saying things. They don't just go bop, 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 bop. There's that type of a considerate energy about taking mm -hmm. everything to you know, account the best that you can. She's got that kind of energy. She's got the matter of fact, the straightforward, strong, but also being able to understand where other people are at then you're even more effective at communicating and talking with them, not just to them. Ooh, cool. Yeah, man. It's always good. Go ahead, Mac. You were going to say something. No, I'm good. I love it all. She's amazing. You she know, and, and yeah, it's, it's phenomenal because I have a lot of respect for her and her talents, the way that she reads for people. You know, as I've shared quite a bit, that I love going to her public presentations because when she's doing the tarot, they'll come in and go, oh, well, okay, those are lovely cards. That's nice. And, you know, not necessarily giving too much value and interest to it, but like, okay. And then they'll sit down and she'll start doing a reading and they're like, okay, yeah. That's eerily accurate on that one, which we've had recently. But also in that way, they start to shift go. And what about? And so it moves from just the entertainment of cards to the information of the soul that those cards are speaking, in this case, to Maggie with. To go, there's a lot of people on the planet. Not everyone has the same circumstance or the same personality kind of thing. So if you can be pretty accurate and pretty effective, it's either really good guesswork or I don't know, something to it. I love it when she puts the, the uh, card of the day or whatever now on yeah. Facebook. And I'm yeah. reading it there and going, damn. It's really cool, but seeing all these different tools. And Maggie does astrology. She's also created a necklace, uh, a warrior yes. necklace. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a fantastic. Yes. But it's great because it's the individual person's own chart, their own uniqueness of who they are that now is adorning them. And it's really nice when you can have fun and look good. Anybody, anybody that wants to see what, what we're talking about, just go on to Jamie Clark dot net on your computer or write to bob charles show at live.com and i will send you the picture because i saved it <laughs> awesome yeah and it's really cool we had a great time the other night at an evening with our loved ones under the stars it was mm. very very yes i saw that that was kind of a you had some you had some great company to uh yes a lot out. of fun heck yeah it's a great interview so we'll be playing that uh, for season five coming up fairly soon and uh, just a lot of fun you know as a colleague and, and knowing her and how she works we got to work together and it was great because we had a great conversation you know i've always got the oddball questions but it was yeah. really nice to address those like oh that's cool that's different so really had a great time. So thank you for all those who came out. A lot of fun. I can, see see the, I can see him in the car now. What did she say? <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. You know, a lot of accuracy, a lot of like, uh, that's a lot of information. There's no way you could know. I always so, like when somebody turns around to me and says, you didn't understand. 
<laughs> so, and I, I turn around. What I, you know, my, I can feel. I'm like a thermometer upside down when that happens. You know, <laughs> you can feel the feel the red coming up. And I turn around and go, "What was the question?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm enough. gonna get. Yeah, well, you got to get on one way or the other, right? Bobby, Me, always Bobby. a lot of fun, man. Always we're gonna a lot see of fun. You, we're gonna see you guys in a couple of weeks. Yep. And, yep. Uh, you know, hopefully everything will be working. I hope. Cross your yes, fingers. Yes, it will be. We're doing good. Before everything, well, what I, we're actually trying to do is we're trying to turn the whole studio around, sort of. Now, whether I'm going to get to do this or not, I don't know because you got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got seven computers here that wow. I have well, seven of them to turn them around the other way. So, I mean, we can we can run videos and everything else in that, but I don't do it with Skype. Right, that's fantastic. I, I have to use Zoom, so we're going to get Zoom zooming. Good. Yeah. Freaking a, a lot more coming from it. Put it in, was an address out. Say, look, we got forty minutes. Pick it so I'll pick a subject and say, this is what we're going to talk about. You want to come in and talk about it? Come on in. Cool. I don't care what they say, and it won't be on YouTube. It's going to go to other websites, which I will not bet. your this one here won't hit YouTube. Okay. But you know, you'll be able to say whatever you want to, and and really, you're gonna you're gonna hear people's hearts, the real ones. Not the fake ones, not people that who are hiding behind a, a facade or anything. The people who are actually going to come out and talk. And that's the kind of stuff. I mean, you, you must feel the same way. I mean, when somebody does that, you get hit with it. You talk about getting hit with energy. Yeah. Wham. You know yeah. that person better than you knew them before. And without judgment. Understanding without judgment. compassion. No right. judgment. Never. Got it. So All right, it'll, Bobby. It'll be cool. Always good. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. Here's a little bit of music. You'll like this. Yeah, oh yeah. I want to tell everybody, listen, we are going to be on in a couple of weeks. Same Tuesday with the same two people. They are unbelievable. We are we as a mega duo of two people who will tell the world what to do. Until that time, God bless y'all. Bob Charles.